Hey guys, this is the uh, quick down and dirty review for the piano and guitar linear exam after the first trimester of my piano and guitar course at NCSSM. You're going to note here I've got a list of everything that you'll find on the exam. Let's just run through the list. Number one, there will be a section where you identify the names of notes in treble and bass clef, and that's simply looking at the notes and naming the notes. Okay. Number two, we'll identify a couple of the intervals in that list of notes. So you'll look at two different notes and tell me what the interval is. Is it a perfect fourth? Is it a minor third, etc.? The third section of the exam is um, the most difficult. I'm going to show you how to do it. It's just one of identifying the key of a piece of music and how to change the key of a piece of music from one key to another. So we're going to take a few minutes on that one right now. And then uh, the fourth section is scales and really identifying and being able to write out scales in both the major and minor keys, uh, all three minors, natural, harmonic, and melodic. The fifth section is intervals and identifying and writing intervals. And the sixth section is inversions of intervals. With that in mind, we're going to go ahead and start. I want you to uh, look over here and um, the camera will pan over to this side and we're just going to go through just a couple of things. I'm going to step to the opposite side here. Uh, first section is identifying note names. You'll have a series of notes in the treble clef. And uh, let's do something like that. And your job is simply to name the note. You'll look at this note and be able to tell me it's a G. You'll look at this, it's a C. This one happens to be an A flat and this one happens to be an E. There will be something very similar in the bass clef, something like this, and your job will be to identify this as an E, this as a C sharp, and this as a G. I think you get the idea there. Now, the second part of that bit is there will be two notes circled like this, and then I say, what is the interval between those two notes? As you look at that interval, you ought to look at that and go, well, first of all, I can tell by the spacing that that's some kind of fifth. And then you'll count the half steps between those notes. And if you count th those half steps, you're going to find that it's eight half steps from A flat to E, and that eight half steps would be some kind of an augmented fifth. And you'll have several of those as part of the first section of the test. That's the first section naming notes, and then identifying some intervals. Let me go ahead and erase that. We're going to go on to the second section, or actually, by my list, it's the third section, and that's key and transposition. Now, this section requires you to synthesize a couple of the ideas that we've gone over in theory, and that is, um, number one, how keys work, and how, in a major scale, um, if you have an A major scale, it starts on an A, and if you have a G major scale, it starts and ends on a G. Let me just show you how this works. We'll assign you a little melody. Um, let's say that this one has one sharp in the melody, and it looks something like this. And here will be our melody. Now, we can take that melody and we go, the first question is, what key is this melody in? Well, two things. We're going to take a look and say, well, we've got one sharp. We'll refer to our circle of fifths. And that'll tell you that when there's one sharp, it's either in G major or e, mi uh, e minor. And this particular melody starts and ends on a G, just like a G major scale would start and end on a G. And so you can pretty much guarantee that this is in the key of G major. Now, the second step to this is then I then say, rewrite that same melody in another key. For today's example, let's rewrite that same melody in, in fact, I'm going to change this to a treble clef here. And we'll rewrite that same melody in the key of A major. Now, two things have to happen to put this into A major. The first thing is the key signature has to change. So refer to your circle of fifths 
and you'll see that the key of A major has three sharps, F sharp, C sharp, and G sharp. So the first thing you have to do is change the key signature. And then the second thing you would have to do is change the starting and ending note and the relationships of all notes in between. Just like if we went from a G major scale to an A major scale, it goes from starting and ending on G to starting and ending on A. This melody is the same way. So we're going to start on the note A, and we're going to end on the note A, and in between the relationships are the same. Up, up, uh, up a major second, up a major second, up a major third, etc. And really, once the key signatures change, you just it, it just works. So if we go A, B, C sharp, E. So these have all just moved up one step end of the major, E, C sharp, A. We've effectively now transposed this melody from G major to A major by changing the key signature and then changing our starting and ending note and the, relation, the, the notes all fall in relationally from there in between. Hope that makes sense. So this is the second part of the test where you'll take this melody and change the key. I think we have two or three examples of those. Let's move on. I'm going to get rid of this. The fourth section of the exam asks you to take, uh, to really kind of run through everything you know about scales. So first, you're, you'll be asked to write an, uh, a major scale in treble clef with accidentals. So let's ask for, um, off the top of my head, we'll ask right now for a D major scale. So we'll, we know that our scale pattern is whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. We know that it's going to start and end on D. It's got to represent every note, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, and D. And if we do our pattern of whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, we're going to find out very quickly that there's an F sharp and a C sharp, and you've accurately done your D major scale. The second part of that section is to write that same scale in bass clef using the key signature. So I'm going to put a bass clef there. We can see that there's two sharps, F sharp and C sharp. We could also go to the circle of fifths and do the same thing. We find a D in bass clef and run right up the scale. D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. There's no need to write in the, uh, the uh, accidentals because they're taken care of by the key signature. The third step is to identify the relative minor of D major, which you've learned that it's the sixth step of the scale. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the relative minor of D major is B minor. So, if we were to write a B minor scale, it starts and ends on B. It has the same sharps and flats as D major, two of them, C sharp and F sharp. So, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. That gives us our natural minor scale for B. Let me rewrite that just a little bit nicer so it's a little clearer. B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A, B. B natural minor. Our harmonic minor will have a raised seventh step So we'll take that A and we'll turn it into an A sharp, giving us a B harmonic minor, and then a B melodic minor has a raised sixth and seventh step ascending. So on the way up, we'll raise that sixth step as well, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. And then we have to write it going down 
because coming back down, it's the same as the natural minor again. So let's make this into a treble clef. We'll start on that B. And descending, we're back to a A natural, G natural, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, B. Melodic minor ascending, melodic minor descending. Descending is exactly like the natural minor. So this fully fleshes out all of your understanding of the major and minor scales. Probably worth a good review there. Okay? The next section is intervals. So you'll just get tons of intervals to work with. I'll give you a couple here. Um, so if we look at these, I should probably do uh, one that looks like this. Okay. So if we look at these, the first thing you'll do is identify the name of the interval. You look at the spacing there, that's a fifth, that's a third, that's a seventh, that's a fourth. I really recommend that you know the major or perfect, the number of half steps in the major or perfect intervals and work from there. For instance, for a major second, it's two half steps. A major third, is four half steps. A perfect fourth is five. A perfect fifth is seven. A major sixth is nine. A major seventh is 11. And then you can always set, know that, um, that you can get to your minor interval or diminished or augmented from there. For instance, with any of the major intervals, a minor is the major interval minus one. A diminished is the minor interval minus two. For the perfect intervals, a diminished is the perfect minus one. So we can work from there. But let's look at this. We know we've got an F to a C. I would recommend using the keyboard that I'll give you as a resource. I'll just, let's see, I'll write a keyboard right here real quickly. That's a C. That's an F. That's a C. Oh, that's not right. That's a C right there. And then we can work from there and say, okay, we've got from F to C, we know it's some kind of a fifth. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven half steps. A perfect fifth is seven half steps. We can identify it as a perfect fifth. Here we have a third of A to C. We know it's a third. Here's our A, one, two, three half steps. A major third is four half steps, so a minor third is how we'll identify that. Seventh, from F to E. If we count the half steps from F all the way up to E, we're gonna find that that is 11 half steps. Now I'm gonna find a major seventh. And be really careful of any interval that involves uh, a B and an F, or an F. If we count the half steps between B and F, let's just drop a B back here behind the C. And, uh, gee, I wrote a fourth there. Should have been a fifth, I'm sorry. Now, if we count those half steps, one, two, three, four, five, six half steps from B to F, and a perfect fifth is seven, so that must be a diminished fifth. You get the idea there. Order of operations here is to first identify the interval, fourth, fifth, sixth, third, etc. And then second, identify the quality of the interval, major, minor, diminished, perfect, augmented. That gets us that far. Then the last step is to take intervals that we've identified and invert the intervals. You should know at this point that when intervals invert, fourths invert to fifths and vice versa. Thirds invert to sixths and, in, and vice versa. Seconds invert to sevenths and vice versa. 
From a quality perspective, perfect inverts to perfect, major inverts to minor, diminish inverts to augmented. So a perfect fourth inverts to a perfect fifth. A minor third inverts to a major sixth. A diminished fifth would invert to an augmented fourth. A major seventh would invert to a minor second, and so on. That's the last part of the test. Hopefully with this brief review, you'll be in good shape. I've got a couple other reminders for you. Number one, it's a Moodle exam. Please bring your computers, be ready to go. Uh, we have a hard copy of the test, and then you simply put your answers on the Moodle exam. That's number one. Number two, you can review with any of my theory videos that you've got. I recommend that you do that, and you'll be in good shape there. And don't forget that you'll be given a couple of resources for the test. You'll be given a uh, circle of fifths to use as a resource, and you'll be given a, uh, a, a graphic of a piano keyboard to use as a resource for counting half steps and whole steps. If you're wondering, boy, Mr. Laird, what do I really need to memorize for this test? I would say, at the very minimum, I would memorize the, the major scale pattern, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half. And I would probably memorize what the sharps and flats look like on the staff for your key signatures. The order of sharps and flats and what they look like on the staff. Those are the two, really the two only things that you really have to have in your memory as we go. Okay, let's just pan back up here to the titles of the sections for the test to remind you one more time. This is essentially our whole trimester. Identifying note names, identifying intervals, taking a little melody, changing its key, transposing it into a new key. This really involves understanding key signatures and tonal centers and scales. Our scales, major, and the three minors and understanding how they relate together, identifying intervals, and being able to invert those intervals and identifying the inversions. I hope that helps. That's your review for the linear exam. Good luck. I look forward to seeing you at the exam. Oh, I'll give you one more thing. Before I finish up, make sure that you bring your folder to the exam. You'll turn in your folder at the beginning of this exam. I'll get a grade on your folder during the exam. You can pick it up on your way out. Thanks. We'll see you at the test.